Today we are going to be talking about the little clay cart on Ritchakatika by Sudraka. This is the second lecture of the series and in my last lecture I have already given a background of um, the play and I have also outlined the sort of social context, the classical Indian social context in which the play unfolds. I have also mentioned that this play deviates from the tradition of the Natya Shastra uh, by, of Bharata Muni in that it does not show, depict characters from the nobility but it depicts, it portrays characters who are commoners, who are common people. Okay. Once again, this uh, le lecture is being hosted by Radio Salesian 90.8 FM and it is intended for the English honor students. Uh, this is part of, Mrichakatika is part of core course 3 in the second semester of those pursuing their English honors course under North Bengal University. Okay, um, I've also mentioned in my last lecture regarding the cosmopolitan nature of the play. Uh, I have told that this play is written in both Sanskrit and Pali and only a few of the characters such as Charudatta, Aryaka, the exiled prince and um, the judge. They are the ones who speak, uh, also Sharvilaka who is Madanika's lover. They are the ones who speak in uh, Sanskrit. The rest of the characters all speak in Prakrit dialect. Okay, We are going to be referring to the 1905 translation by uh, by. Uh, just give me a second. Yeah, we are going to be referring to the 1905 translation by Arthur William Ryder. Uh, he was a professor at, of Sanskrit at the University of Harvard. And uh, this is the first English known English translation of the play. And I've already also mentioned to you in my last lecture how this play has been revived and it has been staged and restaged for the European audiences. Okay, so I have told you that this is a 10 act play. And uh, let us look at what happens in the course of these 10 acts, okay? Um, in Act 1, which is entitled The Gems Are Left Behind, uh, it's the evening of the first day. And I told you that uh, the, there's a prologue in which the writer, not much is known about the playwright, the playwright King Shudraka, he's giving a eulogy of his own self and his own court, okay? After the prologue, there's Act 1 where we meet Charudatta, who is within his house, he is talking with his friend Maitreya and he is discussing about his poverty. I told you even Charudatta, though he is of high birth, but he does not belong to the nobility. Okay, So he deplores his poverty and he is talking about his poverty to his friend Maitreya. Okay? And while they are speaking, Vasantisena, she appears in the street outside. She is pursued by the courtier and Samsthanaka. Samsthanaka is the main antagonist or the villain in this play. Uh, he desires Vasantasena, but Vasantasena does not desire him back. He is also the brother of one of King Palaka's concubines. And I have also told you that this play will end with a shift in power, where King Palaka will be deposed and Prince Aryaka, who has been sent to exile, will return and he will assume the throne. Okay. Um, Samsthanaka makes degrading offers of his love to Vasantasena. Uh, and meanwhile, what happens? Charudatta sends Maitreya from the house to offer sacrifice, and through the open door, Vasantasena slips unobserved into the house. Maitreya returns after an altercation with Samsthanaka and recognizes Vasantasena. Vasantasena, this is very important, she leaves a casket of gems in the house for safekeeping with Maitreya, and she returns to her own home. Now, Act 2 entitled The Shampooer Who Gambled. Okay, this is an interlude of sorts. This is not directly related to the subplot of the play. But the shampooer or the masseur, he gives massage to Charudatta. He will become an important minor character but an important character because he will later become a Buddhist monk and he will revive Vasantasena from the point of near death. Okay, so Act 2 is an interlude of sorts. It is uh, it's a subplot. It's not directly related to the main plot. We see a group of gamblers, we see the shampooer or the masseur and there is a bit of scuffle and skirmish that goes on, not a very important act and there is this episode involving a runaway elephant and all of that but it is a subplot, it's a small uh, subsection of the play but remember the shampooer or the masseur of Charudatta, he'll become important because he'll turn into a Buddhist monk and he will save Vasantasena from the point of near death. Okay, Act 3, entitled The Hole in the Wall, here we see that Sharvilaka, Sharvilaka as I've already mentioned, he presents a foil to the character of Charudatta in this play. He's a contrast to the character of Charudatta and Sharvilaka is in love with Madanika. Madanika is Vasantasena's 
confidant and maid okay she is also held bonded she is sold to vasantasena so she is also held bonded bondage by vasantasena okay to so sharvilaka who desires madanika he wants to buy her freedom and for doing that he will steal vasantasena's jewels he will make a hole in the wall that is why act 3 is called the hole in the wall he'll make a hole in the wall and he'll enter through the hole and he will steal the gem of caskets which vasantasena has left with charudatta's friend maitreya for safe keeping okay act 4 it's called madanika and sharvilaka this is the third day sharvilaka will come to vasantasena's house and he will offer to buy madanika's freedom now this is an aspect of vasantasena's character she recognizes that what sharvilaka is offering as the price is her own stolen gems she recognizes her gems she recognizes her, her own jewels but she nevertheless accepts them and she decides to free madanika she gives madanika her freedom so this also shows that she is a prostitute with a she is a courtesan with a golden heart and this trope of the courtesan with a golden heart it becomes repeated throughout not just ancient classical literature but also <coughs> uh, sort of um, modern bollywood films for example if you have seen films like or if you have heard of films like umrao jaan you will see that this trope of the courtesan or the prostitute with a golden heart this becomes oft repeated it's a oft repeated trope within classical indian literature which is adapted and readapted later even in modern times so vasantasena is a courtesan or a nagarvadhu as i've explained the term to you in my last lecture she frees madanika accepts her own jewels which have been stolen from her from sharvilaka and what charudatta then gives because the necklace has been stolen while it had while it had been, while it had been given for safe keeping to his friend maitreya in from his house charudatta offers a pearl necklace to vasantasena in return okay it's his wife's necklace and he's remember he's already impoverished but nevertheless he wants to make amends and he offers a pearl necklace to vasantasena okay act 5 entitled the storm this is the evening of the third day we see that charudatta appears in the garden of his house and he receives a servant of vasantasena who announces that vasantasena is on her way to visit him then vasantasena appears in the street with the courtier the two describe alternately the violence and beauty of the storm which is suddenly arisen vasantasena dismisses the courtier enters the garden and expl explains to charudatta how she has again come into possession of the gem casket i already told you that sharvilaka has given the gem casket to her in order to secure his lover madanika's freedom Meanwhile the storm has so increased in violence that she is compelled to spend the night in Charudatta's house. This is it is during this situation that the two of them them will come uh, they'll become physically close they'll become physically intimate with each other okay and just like in Shakespearean tragedy here the storm uh, signifies a kind of it's it's a way of nature intervening within the plot of the play just like after duncan's murder in macbeth you have a storm uh, which shows you that something abysmal has happened in the course of the play here you have the storm intervening almost as a character in the play and it is bringing together the two leads that is vasantasena and charudatta okay act 6 entitled the swapping of the bullock carts this is the morning of the fourth day uh, vasantasena has spent the night with charudatta and next morning she meets his young son rohasena okay now because charudatta is a poor brahmin he cannot afford to buy expensive toys for his son rohasena and rohasena has a small bullock cart this is that is where the title of the play comes from rohasena has a small bullock cart which is made of clay and he is ashamed to show it to his friends now vasantasena in a gesture of kindness and goodwill she <coughs> decides to load the tray with her own jewels from the gem casket so that it looks like a golden cart okay that is where the name comes from the little clay cart and once again this shows that vasantasena she does not really for her physical you know material wealth is really not so much of a concern otherwise she would have given into the advan advances of samsthanaka so she is a prostitute or a courtesan or a nagarvadu with a golden heart and she gives the jewels to rohasena uh, to decorate his cart okay act 6 is uh, okay something else ha happens in uh, sorry act 6 the swapping of the bullock cart something else also happens here Uh, Aryaka appears Aryaka is the exiled prince who appears and enters Charudatta's cart two policemen come on the scene they're searching for Aryaka one of them looks into the cart and discovers Aryaka but agrees to protect him this he does by deceiving and finally maltreating his companion okay 
Act 7 called Aryaka's Escape. Now, this is another subplot which will become important. I told you this play is as much about a change in the dynamics of power uh, as much as it is about the love between Vasantasena and Charudatta. Okay. So, Aryaka's Escape, uh, Act 7. This is the fourth day. Charudatta is waiting for Vasantasena in the park. His cart, in which Aryaka lies hidden, appears. Charudatta discovers the fugitive, removes his fetters, lends him the cart and leaves the park. Okay, there's a confusion here. Remember, there are three bullock carts in the play. Okay, one is the bullock cart, which Rohasena was playing with, the child's cart, the little clay cart, that's where the name comes from. And there are also two bullock carts. One belongs to Charudatta, which he had sent for Vasantasena to pick her up. Okay. And the other cart is the one where Aryaka is hiding. Okay. There is a confusion here. You will see that the cart containing Aryaka will go to Charudatta, whereas the Vasantasena will uh, get into the cart which Samsthanaka sends. So, there is a confusion. There is a misunderstanding that occurs. Okay. Act 8 called The Strangling of Vasantasena. This is the fourth day. Uh, a Buddhist monk, uh, the character who we have met in the second act, who is a shampoo or the masseur from the second act, enters the park. He has difficulty in escaping from Samsthanaka who appears with the courtier. Now, Samsthanaka's servant drives in the cart which Vasantasena has entered by mistake. I told you there are two bullock carts here, apart from the clay cart of the little kid. Uh, one was supposed to come to Samsthanaka containing, carrying the exiled Aryaka so that Samsthanaka could get rid of him because here is a, uh, a contest over kingship is involved because here Samsthanaka is acting on the behalf of King Palaka. Okay? And Palaka is sitting on the throne and Aryaka is the exiled prince. So, Aryaka was supposed to be in one of the bullock carts which uh, was supposed to come to Samsthanaka but that accidentally goes to Charudatta and Charudatta frees the exiled prince. He frees Aryaka, he cuts his fetters, his chains and sets him free. And Vasantis enters the other cart by mistake, the one that was supposed to go to Charudatta and ends up coming to instead to Samsthanaka. Now, Samsthanaka discovers her and he strangles her. He strangles her by her throat and he leaves her for dead. Okay. Then she is discovered by the Buddhist monk who revives Vasantasena. Samsthanaka leaves her for dead uh, but uh, the Buddhist monk revives her and conducts her to a nearby monastery or Gomba. Okay. Act 9, entitled The Trial. <coughs> this is the fifth day when Samsthanaka accuses Charudatta of murdering Vasantasena for her money. He's a very unscrupulous character. I told you he's the main antagonist or the villain in the play. And he's also the symbol of, uh, he's almost a Machiavellian character, if I may so use the word Machiavel. Uh, Machiavel, as you may have already heard or read uh, when we were doing. Uh, Marlowe, Christopher Marlowe, when we're looking at the character of the younger Mortimer, refers to someone for whom the end justifies the means. Okay, the name comes from Machiavel's ill principi or the prince. Okay, so uh, Samsthanaka is almost a Machiavellian character and he blames Charudatta for the murder of Vasantasena. And remember, Charud uh, Vasantasena had given her gold jewels to the son Rohasena. So Charudatta is framed for the murder of Vasantasena and he's also framed for stealing the jewels. Okay, So, Charudatta, there's a trial. Charudatta is sentenced to death and his wife is supposed to, she is also sentenced, not sentenced, but after he dies, she will be forced to commit sati. Okay, That is burning herself at the funeral pyre of her husband. Act 10, the last act entitled The End. This is the sixth day when two headsmen are conducting Charudatta to the place of execution. He's been sentenced to death. Charudatta takes his last leave of his son and his friend Maitreya. Samsthanaka servant escapes from confinement and betrays the truth, yet he is not believed owing to the cunning displayed by his master. I have already told you, Samsanaka is a Machiavellian character. He is a Machiavellian antagonist of this play. Okay. But at the right moment, Vasantasena appears herself accompanied by the Buddhist monk and her appearance puts a summary end to the proceedings. The news is brought that Prince Aryaka has killed and supplanted the former king Palaka and that he wishes to reward Charudatta and that he has by royal edict freed Vasantasena from the necessity of living as a courtesan. So, it's a happy ending. Vasantasena no longer has to remain the Nagar Vadhu. She is a free woman and she no longer has to remain a public woman and Samsanaka is brought before Charudatta for sentence because it's found out that he had unscrupulously framed Charudatta and almost pushed him to the verge of death. He, has also, he had also strangled Vasantasena but she's alive. He's brought from before Charudatta for sentence but is pardoned by the same man who he had grievously injured okay the play ends with an epilogue okay so this is more or less the summary of the play remember a few things about the play one 
its cosmopolitan character which i've already discussed in that it is written in both sanskrit and in prakrit and also remember this play deviates from the tradition of the natya shastra in that it shows you the lives of commoners instead of just focusing on the life of the nobility okay thank you